Good Wednesday evening. I want to welcome you again to the Trinity Baptist Church in Westfield, North Carolina. And if you don't have a church to attend or you're looking for a church to attend, I'd like to take time to invite you to come and be with us in any or all of our services. Our Sunday morning services start at 10 o'clock. We have Sunday school preaching at 11, Sunday night services at 6 p.m., Wednesday night service at 7 p.m., and we're located at 1233 Collins Town Road in Westfield, North Carolina. And uh, if you'd ever like to correspond by mail, you could send it to 275 Toast Road, Mount Airy, North Carolina, 27030. We also have an FM transmitter for those that are too sick to come inside due to sickness or a disability that they can't come inside. They can still come to church. They can come to the church parking lot, sit in their vehicle, tune the radio to 92.9 FM, and be able to hear what's going on inside. Sure is good to be we this Wednesday evening, and we hope this will be a help to you and encouragement to each and every one of you. We're not trying to uh, give people an excuse not to go to church, but for those that are not able to go to church, we want to do this to be a help to them. And then many of you that view do go to church, and we're thankful for that. You may view before or after or some other day of the week, but whenever you view, we thank you so much for viewing, and I encourage you to help us get the word out share these messages, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, hit the like button on these videos. That'll help um, YouTube as far as getting it out to more people noticing it. So uh, we want to get the gospel to as many people as we can. So you can be a big help in that if you would do that. Well, i tell you what let's do. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then we're going to sing a song together with the help of God. Father, thank you so much for the privilege of giving us to be able to have this video this evening. I pray it be a help and encouragement to each and every one that is viewing. I pray for, for the lost, most of all, they'll see their need to be saved. Those that's backslid, they'll get right. Lord, help them. I pray for the many that are sick in body, that you'd raise them up physically. Lord, meet their need. I pray for those on our prayer list, God, and others. I pray for these that's uh, had loved ones pass away. We pray for them that you'd encourage them, Lord, and help them, Lord, to look to you for the help that they need to go on. I want to pray for all of our missionaries, God, you'd bless them and meet their need, Lord. And then uh, we pray especially for Brother Brent Rochester and his family. And little Chloe, God, that you'd bless her and meet her need, Father, continue to. And Lord, she'll continue to get better and uh, just be able to be used, already being used in a great way, but continue to be able to be used in a great way. Thank you for their family. Bless them, Lord, I pray. And thank you for answered prayer. Pray for churches without pastors, God, that you'd give them the man of God that they need. I pray for, Lord, everywhere the word of God's preached that you'd bless them. And we'll praise you for all you do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We're gonna do page number 137 in the old church hymnal. And uh, well, I'll tell you what, I'm glad I can trust the Lord. How about you? I am so glad I can trust Jesus. This song talks about that. It is so Sweet to trust in Jesus. Sing along if you know it, and uh, hope this will be a blessing to you today. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take Him at His word, just to rest upon His promise, just to know the same. I'm so glad I learned to trust. 
trust thee, precious Jesus, Savior, friend, and I know that thou art with me, will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious I'm so glad I've learned to trust him. Precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me, wilt be with me to the end. What a Savior. What a Savior. Well, I hope you know him as your Savior. I hope you've been born again. Well, we'll do another song here in just a little bit. But uh, we may make an announcement or two. We'll see. But uh, we just want to and encourage you to turn and look with us in the Word of God if you are to where you can. We sure would like for you to. And be taking that good old authorized King James Bible and turn with us to the book of Acts chapter number 5. Acts chapter number 5 will be down around verse number 12 with the help of the Lord. And we want you to be able to look with us if you are to where you can. If not, we'll read to you out of the Word of God. But I like for people to see it with their eyes, not just hear it. We need to hear it. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But I want folks to know that I'm reading out of the word of God and they can read along. And uh, God speak to your heart. God speaks to my heart. And I'm glad that he does. Uh, before we do this next song, um, I want to make an announcement. Coming up on February, February the 11th, we're going to have Friends and Family Day. And we're encouraging our folk to invite folk that... Now, now, if they're in a good Bible-preaching, Bible-believing church, uh, you know, let them go to their church, back their church up. But uh, friends and family that are not in church or maybe they're out of church, don't go to church. Try to get them to come and we'll have a meal together after the service and just have a good time in the Lord. We'll start about 11 o'clock on that day, February the 11th, and uh, give our folks a little more time to cook and get ready, and then we'll start at 11 and have a meal together about around noon or a little after and just have a good time in the Lord and we'll look forward to that. So just keep that in mind. Pray for service tonight here at the house of God. This Wednesday night service, we have ours at seven. And as I said earlier, if you don't have a home church to attend or you're looking for one or maybe your church don't have a midweek service, we have folk come and visit on Wednesday nights that their church don't have a Wednesday night service. And we're glad to have them come and visit with us. And uh, you'd be invited to do that as well. Well, I want to do a song called Gone Away with a Friend. We'll try to do this one today. And uh, then we'll be in the book of Acts chapter number five. But I hope this song will be a blessing to you. I'll make sure this thing's still to you. Gone Away with a Friend. As I look into the face of an old saint of God, I thought your race had ended, your life's crown. Soul in the palm of his 
man, what a blessing. Those, our loved ones that have already gone on, they've just gone away. If they were saved, they've just gone away to be with a friend. Thank God for that. I hope that song was a blessing to you. And lay this guitar down. We'll get right into the Word of God in the book of Acts, Acts chapter number five. Acts chapter number five. Well, thank God for His Word. And I've already made announcements. Don't need to do that. I've already done that, excuse me. Uh, but uh, I'm glad the Lord can help us as we look into the Word of God. And uh, the Bible tells us in Acts chapter five a story about a man and a woman that lied to God said that they gave a certain amount of money, but they didn't. They gave part of it back or kept part of it back rather instead of giving what they said they gave. The Bible says in Acts chapter five that they lied unto God. It says in Acts chapter three, they lied to the Holy Ghost and he's God. And then it tells us in verse number five, he lied to God. Think about that, verse number four actually. Well, God killed him and his wife because of that. God took them to, either took them on home or they died and went to hell if they were lost. Now, the Bible says in verse 11, and when this happened, and great fear came upon all the church and upon as many as heard these things. Boy, I, I guarantee you it would. These people been caught lying to God and God kills them both. But he had to get people's attention, wouldn't it? Great fear came upon all the church upon as many as heard these things. Now in verse number 12, and notice this right here as a result of this. And by the hands of the apostles, now don't miss that, by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought, done, you might say. By the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord. Boy, I like that. Hey, man, we want to, hey, uh, God's just killed Ananias and Sapphira for lying. Uh, we want to make sure we're right with God. And they were in one accord, the Bible says. They were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Many signs and wonders were wrought among the people by the apostles. And verse 13 says, and the rest, those besides the apostles, and the rest, durst no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. Man, people were afraid. People had to fear God. But yet the Bible says in verse 14, and believers were added, were the more added to the Lord because of this. Fear of God. They wanted to get right with God. They didn't want to not be right with God. They wanted to be right with God. And the Bible says in verse 14, and believers were added, and believers were the more added, excuse me, to the Lord. And the believers were more added to the Lord. More people got saved. Multitudes, the Bible says. Multitudes, both of men and women. Men and women got saved by the grace of God. Praise the Lord. Well, the Lord knew what he was doing, didn't he? By the way, he always knows what he's doing. He might not do it like you want it done. He might not do it like I want it done, but he knows what he's doing. And he always does right. And he loves his people. Thank God for that. Well, let's read on and see what it says. Verse 14, believers were the more added to the Lord in multitudes, both of men and women, insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets. Notice this, they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least of the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Who are we talking about? We're talking about the apostles, the, the apostolic gifts that God gave them. Notice, in so much, verse 15, that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. Peter was the instrument. God was the one playing the instrument. Amen. God was the one playing it. I heard this years ago. I don't know if it was a man by the name of Tony Rice or a man by the name of Doc Watson, but somebody was bragging on how good their guitar sounded when they played. They were playing that guitar, and somebody just kept bragging on that guitar, bragging on that guitar, how good that guitar sound. And they quit playing it, and they said, how does it sound now? How does it sound now? Well, it wasn't making no sound, was it? Instead of glorifying the guitar, they should have been telling the player, boy, you sure didn't know how to play that guitar. 
They were glorifying the guitar. You know what people do a lot of times? They glorify the instrument and they forget to glorify God himself that's using the instrument. When people praise men, oh, it's sickening. Sickening when people praise men. Hey, if you thank God for a preacher, if you thank God for a teacher or a brother and sister in Christ, don't, don't just brag on them all the time and Listen, it's sickening. Brag on the God that's using that instrument. Brag on the God that's using that instrument. Well, verse 16 says, there came also a multitude out of the cities round about in Jerus to Jerusalem, bringing sick folks with them. Got a ladybug after me this while I'm trying to make this video. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about into Jerusalem, verse 16, bringing sick folks as well. And them which were vexed vexed, irritated, troubled, vexed with unclean spirits. Notice, notice this right here. And they were healed every one. They were healed every one. Every one. I saw a meme the other day, and some of you might like this, some of you might not like this. But I saw a meme the other day, and it had a picture of one of these so-called faith healers. And it said, the, and, I, and by the way, I'm not for the lottery at all. But here's what this meme said. The reason you don't see faith healers working in hospitals is the same reason you don't hear about psychics winning the lottery. Think about that just a minute. The reason you don't see quote unquote faith healers working in hospitals is the same reason you don't hear about psychics winning the lottery. Well, I want to tell you something. The Bible says, and they were healed every one. Every one were healed. You know what the modern day quote unquote faith healer says? If you've got enough faith, if you've got enough faith, the ones that don't heal, don't get healed, they didn't have enough faith. That's what they say. But notice what happened here with the apostles and God using Peter, the apostle Peter, the Bible says, and they were healed every one. Verse number 16. What you gonna do with that? I'll tell you what you gonna do with that. Same thing I do with that. Believe it. It's truth, amen. Now, verse 17. Then, after this happened, all these people getting healed, these multitudes, men and women getting saved. Then the high priest rose up, and all they that were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation. They were filled with jealousy and anger. Why? Because the Lord's getting credit for all these people getting healed and getting saved. And they don't like it because they didn't believe Jesus was Christ or God in the flesh. The Bible says they rose up. Well, they rose up at this thing and were filled with indignation and laid their hands on the apostles. <laughs> they didn't have the fear of God in them, did they? Look what God did to Ananias and Sapphira for lying to the Holy Ghost and lying unto God. They laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. As I think about that right now, as I think about that, God didn't kill them right there. They were lost. Maybe the reason God killed Ananias and Sapphira because they were saved and he made an example out of them and took them on home. Possibly. But notice again, verse 17. Then the high priest rose up and all they that were with them, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation, laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. Put them in prison. But I don't want to stop right there. I want to read the next verse before I close. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, and gave them a message to preach. We'll look at that, Lord willing, next Wednesday night. But I love the fact that, thank God, they thought they could put them in prison and do away with them, but the Bible says the angel of the Lord by night, probably the same night, opened the prison doors and brought them forth. The, 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 the lost religious crowd put them in jail. The God of heaven let them out. Praise God for that. Boy, when you go to fighting against God, you better watch out. You better watch out. We don't need to do that, do we? I hope this has been a help to you this evening. Lord willing, we'll pick back up in verse number 19 and 20 and on down of the book of Acts chapter 5 next Wednesday evening. Thank you for viewing. I hope it's been a help to you. 
And until next Wednesday night, God bless you is my prayer.